Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol, and it may come as a surprise for you to know that I really like Millie Bobby Brown. I think she's a fantastic actress, uh, still really young and has a lot to come into her own in Hollywood, but I think she's been making a great name for herself and has kind of been the only Stranger Things actor to, to really step out of her comfort zone as a Stranger Things actor. I mean, yeah, you could say David Harbour because of his role in that abysmal Hellboy movie, and his most recent Violent Night, uh, you know, also that little bit of work he did in the MCU with Black Widow. I don't know, but every time I see him in something, I just think of Hopper. You know, he has similar mannerisms, similar ways of talking. I just, I don't really see anyone other than Hopper, or maybe I'm just seeing David Harbour. Millie Bobby Brown, that's not the case, though. Whether it be Stranger Things, Godzilla King of the Monsters... Godzilla vs. Kong, Enola Holmes, which a lot of people will probably be surprised to know that I like, considering how I feel about anti-woke stuff and whatnot. Don't get me wrong, it's not that great of a movie, but I like it. It was fun, and enjoyable, and, and maybe I just give it credit because it's something slightly different and original in an era where all we're getting is cape shit. So with Enola Holmes 2 out, I haven't watched it yet, I need to get to it, but I did find this article from Comic Book Resources. Millie Bobby Brown criticized for non-consensual Enola Holmes 2 kiss. Oh my word. Alright. I don't know what this article has to say. We're going to go through it together. However, I'm going to say off the cuff, since I have not seen this film, I don't know if Millie Bobby Brown should be criticized for something that was written in a script that her character did, not her. I mean, yeah, she did it, but... If that was part of the script, like, oh, you're sp supposed to kiss this guy. Like, isn't that a thing in movies, the whole surprise kiss and, you know, the other party ends up loving it? And, yeah, it's... Let's go through this. Enola Holmes 2 star Millie Bobby Brown is called out by an intimacy coordinator for a kiss scene in the popular Netflix mystery film. What kind of job is an intimacy coordinator? Calm down, buddy. You got a lot to say about this? Do you also like Millie Bobby Brown? Huh? Or are you just as annoyed as I am that there's such a thing as an intimacy coordinator? Maybe I should take you to an intimacy coordinator that can find out why you're such a dick. Oh, I love you, Hondo. Millie Bobby Brown's kissing scene with Lewis Partridge and Enola Holmes, too, seems innocent enough, but an intimacy coordinator claims the star approached it in a problematic way. Oh, give me that good stuff. We've already have terms like intimacy coordinator and problematic and we're on the first paragraph if you can even call this a paragraph we're batting a thousand so far let's see if we can keep this cringe rolling while speaking on netflix tiktok account about the shared smooch between her enola holmes and partridge's tewksbury brown admitted she grabbed his face during rehearsals and kissed him to his surprise okay so fair enough maybe it wasn't in the script but it was improv films are known for improv all the time actors do improv I mean, as long as the individual who was kissed was fine, then what's the big deal? Not only that, but the parts they're playing are that of, you know, lovers or star-crossed lovers, whatever you want to call them. It would seem perfectly in character. Your job is to act. So if you're the one who's playing the kissee, the one receiving the kiss, uh, yeah, you should just look at it as it's in character, I'm going to roll with it, and see what sort of scene you can make of it. It was so cute, really, seeing her take the lead, she said about the scene, and also seeing a girl just make the first move is really exciting. Additionally, she admitted to punching Partridge while mingling on set. Because Lewis is a good friend, I just kept punching him. I wasn't doing stunts. I really was hurting him, she said. By the end of it, he said, Millie, can you just fake punch me? I was fully just getting him right in the stomach. <laughs> I mean, again, this all to me seems like innocent on-set filming stuff, shenanigans, that actors have gotten up to since the inception of the Hollywood film. I mean, should she probably have been fake-hitting him? Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, but she's still young, he's still young, they still have a lot to learn about Hollywood. Uh, action scenes are relatively new to her in her career. I mean, most of her stuff with Eleven and Stranger Things is all with her mind, so she's not actually doing a bunch of physical stuff. And there definitely wasn't a lot of physical fights or anything in the Godzilla films. It was you know, green screen, CGI, and her running and yelling. So, all in all, it seems like this article is out to demonize Millie Bobby Brown, when in all reality, she's just a young Hollywood up-and-comer who is 
figuring things out, flying by the seat of her pants, and making what she thinks is the best cause for her character. When she says, and also seeing a girl just make the move first is just really exciting. I mean, yeah, but by all means, I can absolutely see why she would find that exciting. That's not new to her or to Enola Holmes. The girl making the first move and the boy being, whoa, about it. Like, that's that's been in films before, a lot. So, I can completely see where she's coming from. Brown's comments prompted a response on TikTok from intimacy coordinator Jessica Steinrock, who criticized her for her approach to the scene, saying she shouldn't have surprised Partridge the way she did. I love Millie Bobby Brown, but this is not the cute story you think it is, Steinrock said. That's not for you to decide. That's for Millie Bobby Brown and the one who received the kiss, Partridge, to decide. You don't get to sit back and be like, uh-uh, that was wrong, when both other people were fine with it and nobody was hurt, or no laws were broken. At this point, you're part of the fake outrage problem, but let's go on. I'm sure she and her scene partner have a lot of rapport built up and a great amount of trust, but we should never be surprising anyone during a fight or intimate scene ever. Oh my god. Um, look, I don't think you know how Hollywood works. I don't think you know what it takes to be on a movie set. I don't know what it takes to be on a movie set, but I've watched thousands of hours of behind the scenes on special editions versions of DVDs and Criterion collections. So, stuff like this is normal, and as long as you've got the rapport and improv works for the scene, yeah, this is fine. Shut up, Steiner. Stein, Steinrock, yeah. Steinrock later proclaimed her love for Enola Holmes, too, but said Brown's actions signified a lack of consent and that said actions can escalate as time evolves. I, I really... I don't want to get in to the absolute lunacy that this is. It's a movie. She improved a scene. She told a cute story about improving a scene that her co-star was completely fine with. Why are you making a big deal of this? Why is this news? Why is an intimacy coordinator, as if that's a real freaking job, coming out and throwing shade? I, I love Millie Bobby Brown, but this is problematic. No. Shut up. You're problematic. You claiming things are problematic is more problematic than what you're claiming is problematic. Because you can't just move on. You, you can't let people have anything. When there's a glimmer of hope and nice things and brightness, you have to tear it down by saying, yes, but this nice thing is actually toxic because it's infected by this, that, or the other. You're such a depressing, gross, scummy person that you can't even let people have Enola Holmes 2, as if that was some paragon of cinema without going and making a TikTok about toxicity and how problematic things are and... God, you're scummy. Little things like this can escalate over time, and frankly, she has more power in that situation than he does because she's a really well-known star, Steinrock says. We finally come full circle. We're, we're coming to a point where they are actually saying, oh, a woman had the power and did something wrong, and now she must be punished. Remember how... Remember how that was such a big thing for so long? Like, Louis C.K., he asks a couple of, you know, female comics even jerk off in front of him, and they say yes, but turns out it was actually more or less thought rape, because even though he asked and they consented, he had power over them, and how he was such a bad man, he needed to be canceled, hashtag me too. Well, I guess now hashtag me too against Millie Bobby Brown, because she had the power over him, because she's a bigger star. Oh my goodness, is this ever going to end. I thought we were making progress. Some canceled individuals had come back. It, it seemed like things were going good. But then you, Steinrock, you come back out of the shadows to drag everything down to peak 2016 sensibilities forevermore. Fucking hell. When we do spicy scenes, we love keeping light, having fun, but consent is mandatory. You're not the boss. You don't get to decide what is mandatory. When, when it comes to TikTok, you shouldn't be on there because I think your death is mandatory. Or is it not? Who am I? I can't say what's mandatory, and neither can you. You're not the arbiter of what is and isn't okay and right and good and moral and mandatory. You're just some dipshit on TikTok who's upset that Louis C.K. is back to doing club shows. And it shows. The sequel of the Enola Holmes franchise focuses on the titular character's attempts to establish herself as a credible detective while also chronicling her adventures alongside her brother, Sherlock Holmes, and Tewksbury, 
During the movie, Enola takes on her first case where she's asked with finding a missing girl, going to Sherlock and her friends for advice along the way to help find her. Enola Holmes 2 also stars Helena Bonham Carter as Eudoria Holmes, Hannah Dodd, David Thewlis, Gabriel Turney, and Susan Wolfman. Within the first week of its release, Netflix revealed it accumulated 64.08 million watch hours, helping the movie gain instant success and credibility. Brown has talked up the potential for a threequel in the Enola Holmes franchise, laying some ideas out for the next installment. Well, maybe that's at least one more job that Henry Cavill will get to keep. Look, I don't have a whole lot to say about this. It was a relatively short article. Everything I have to say, not really directed at Millie Bobby Brown. I think she's great. I also don't think she did anything wrong. In fact, I'm worried she's going to see articles like this or keep getting comments like this, and it's going to entrap her. It's going to make her feel boxed in in Hollywood, like she can't improv and she can't see about changing scenes. If anything, it's going to be just another case of a female actress feeling like they have no control or power in Hollywood. And isn't that been what feminists have been fighting like since all this Me Too stuff happened? How women have no power in Hollywood? Now we see a cool, young, talented female actress just going for it and improv and being powerful on set, and she's getting criticized for it. You eat your own. It's so messed up. This Steinrock woman, dude, I bet she's an 800-pound land whale with six cats. And the whole reason she got into the field of intimacy coordination was daddy issues. Look, I don't want to throw shade at this individual. Oh wait, yes I do. Because you're smearing another woman who is literally just doing her job in Hollywood and found an interesting way to tell a cute, flirty, funny story about the job she did and about the cool improv work she did on a nice, cool movie she made. And, and you want to take that from her and from fans and from Netflix, all for TikTok clout. People like this disgust me, and if they disgust you too, then we're on the same page, which is why you should subscribe to my channel. Really, it would mean the world to me. I'm, I'm very much trying to grow this channel. Also, like and comment on the video. Follow me on Twitter, at BoltTheWord, because this has been Words of Paradise.